So we've got this recovered Fiat 595 Abarth, uh, 70th year anniversary edition. Um, so previously recorded category M, uh, non-structural damage. Um, so we're going to be repairing it up. So upon initial inspection, it's got, all. it's got a big hole in the bumper. It requires what looks, yeah, so it requires a radiator, aircon condenser, Looking down into the crash bar, it requires a front crash bar, uh, but there's no structural damage looking around it. Obviously, it needs a new front bump, a new bonnet, but other than that, it's in really good nick. So, it's, it's a 2000 and, uh, 2021 plate with 17,000 miles on the clock. So, the interior is in a bit of a state, but Bodywork wise, apart from the front, it is in really good condition. So it's a 70th year anniversary edition, which is a limited edition. So the boot's in a bit of a state, and this is exactly as we've received it. I was saying about it being a dog owner, wasn't it? So looking at it, I believe it was a previous dog owner's car, because what looks to be muddy paw prints are on the back of the seat. Dog's it's going to need a really, really good clean. It's absolutely filthy inside. Um, it's made in Poland. Yeah, for some reason Italian, it's also made in Italian Poland. Italian made in Poland. <laughs> <laughs> but on both sides, it is uh, pretty straight. There is a little bit of a, what looks to be some sort of parking dent there, quite, quite deep, but we'll get that sorted out. And the wheels are in a bit of a state, but they're all curved very similar. So I think that was when it was recovered. It must have been damaged on the tow truck or something like that. Um, but looking inside the car again, she's absolutely filthy. It's going to need a really good deep clean. Right, your mum. Lift bonnet. Then. Bonnet latch works. That's banana bar. So yeah, this uh, this lamp panel is going to need replacing. You can see it's actually bowed up like a banana in the top corners. Headlights, knackered on both sides. We might be able to fix them, so we're going to look into them. No coolant, because the radiator's exploded. Because of the bullet holes. It's been shot a few times at the front. Probably an extra drug dealer's car. But other than that, it looks in quite good nick. It does run and start and drive, uh, and it's obviously movable. But it's definitely going to need this front end sorting out on it. First up was to remove all the damaged parts on the car so we could assess any damage that we didn't know about and make a list of all the parts we needed to order. So I've just finished stripping the bumpers off um, so you can obviously inspect it a little bit closer. The intercoolers are in good nick, and obviously they'll be quite expensive to buy. Crash bar needs replacing, which we're going to carry on stripping down further. We'll take the radiator out. Um, headlights they headlights need, to need to come out, they're damaged. Um, and I did notice as well that some of the wiring to the horn is also damaged. So that's going to need looking at, so it needs a new horn. Horn repair, maybe. It just looks like it's popped off. Yeah, it might Actually, be repair. Looking at that. Let's look at that. The clutch broken, but yeah. we can careful, might be able to salvage that. 
But the intercooler's are in good nick though. They're alright. They're alright. Yeah. A few missing a few clips though for them. But... Clips, a couple of clips broken. Carry on stripping it down. But the arms are alright though. The arms are fine. Yeah, it's not even touched the arms, has it? No. Right. So we've got it fully stripped down at the front end. Um, so some of the issues that we've just got to fix are, so the horn connector is broken. So that pushes on. The horn itself was broken, but we have managed to fix that part, but the connector itself could do with being replaced because that's obviously not going to hold on. Um, there's another connector, what has been smashed up, which goes to the boost solenoid, which is that one there. That's absolutely knackered and that goes to that part below it. Um, but other than that, it all looks pretty good. There's something up here we're going to have to have a look into what's broken. We're not too sure what that is. Um, but other than that, it's been quite good condition behind. So all the arms are perfectly straight. So there's nothing wrong with the arms. Um, also, there is uh, the boost pipe. It's got a little tiny nick in it, as you can see there, which needs replacing as well. 70. So we're just going to take this top scuttle panel off uh, in order to adjust the wings, because the wing is this passenger side wing has been knocked out slightly and this bracket needs replacing because it's catching Hang on. the inner to make more clearance in here because it's too close to the wing because it's been pushed back on the adjustment so we're going to readjust that so it's the same as the other side and this one so it should be in the gap there it is fear though so they're not built particularly great decided to give the full front and under a good clean and degrease and it came up looking really well. We've come across a, a little issue when removing the faulty, well, broken, cracked 
uh, turbo pipe, you can see there's a little split in it there. When we come to remove it, we notice that this pipe was actually wedged against the turbo and the heat shield for the uh, manifold. So as you can see, it doesn't fit. So since then, we've noticed as it's been hit, it's actually knocked the turbo slightly back. And it's definitely too far back because it's touching the heat shield. So obviously this was something that we wasn't aware of at first when we started stripping it down. So obviously a little bit more work is going to be needed to bring the turbo back to where it's supposed to be. See another sign you can see is this pipe here look it's completely misaligned to where the pin is and where it's supposed to actually line up to so hopefully it's just knocked it back because all it is is like one of these sort of release clamps obviously once that's undone hopefully we can swivel it back up to put it in the right oh direction God. but we'll see So we've loosened this clamp, which is now loose at the top and bottom, so hopefully we can swivel it round and there's no damage to any oil seals or anything like that. It is moving Sorry, slightly. That's moved a fair way, that. It took a bit of an impact on it to actually push it that far back to be fair. I think it, as well as that though, you've got this tube of e clip, haven't you? Yeah. But See if it does straighten up, but I... Yeah, spinning. Is it? So it's to do with that then, isn't it? This was a real pain to do. It took forever to get right, but finally got there in the end. And yeah, it was the impact and the crash moved the turbo back, but we got there in the end. front fully stripped down we took this opportunity to give the car a full uh, service so we're changing the oil here I'm not too sure how easy this would be with the bumper on um, it's very tight in there but with the bumper off it's really easy
first start. Here we're just repinning a plug because it was broken. It's for the turbo boost uh, pressure sensor. So we just put a new plug on it and yeah, plugged it back on and it's as good as new. some of the new parts. A lot of the parts were brand new, but we did get a few second-hand parts, so the frame was second-hand and the bonnet was second-hand, and also the bump was second-hand, all good condition parts. Just finished up building the front end so we've had all the radiator put back on uh, the slam panel and the intercoolers uh, so as you can see the lower intercoolers are all back on and the, the radiator that we're fitting on actually was part of a second hand kit that we bought which actually had the new slam panel because it was all bent um, but the only part that did come with it was the air condenser air con condenser but it didn't look in great nick and we didn't really want to risk it so we will pressure test this radiator to make sure that it's all right before obviously uh, filling it with coolant. But we've just got ourselves a new condenser because we couldn't seem to find a good second hand one that was in any good nick. So yeah. just mounting the new condenser. See, there's obviously a risk with the air con because if you replace the uh, condenser and you find out it's leaking, well, then you've got to pay a garage to, to fill the gas up. So, obviously, it can cause you issues later down. You end up spending more money for the sake of a part that I believe was £150. And if it is, well, it doesn't have sealant, look, because the seals sit into that ridge, lot. See what I mean? But you've got some new seals in the box, so then one's coming. Slightly bigger than you, right? Obviously, that's another thing with the second arm one. You want to get the replacement seals, so you'd have ended up having to either reuse the old ones. They're trying to find a replacement seal. That's the big boy. What is that? I'll tell you what. Well, 
not make it seal all right. I just want to slide on that while you're catching. Uh. How the fuck have I done that? Because that's bent though, it might need wedging in, does it? Um. <laughs> it's not these pushing into there, look. Uh, yeah. There you go. Well, um, are we best to leave that then? So we're just going to put the crash bars back on while the, syst while the uh, coolant system's under low with pressure. We think it's going to be all right, so we're going to carry on just putting the crash bars on because it's quite a quick job to put them on anyway, so it saves the job going forward. Oh. oh, hang on. It's just slightly. So the front end's been all put back together. Uh, the only remaining things now to do is the panel. So we're just waiting for them to come back from the body shop after they've been painted. Um, we're just going to fill it up with coolant now. Uh, so we're going to vacuum fill it, which will also test uh, if there are anything, you know, if there's any leaks. So it puts a vacuum in the system, and if it, if it can't hold the vacuum, then there's a leak somewhere. Um, so this is a kit. So it comes with multiple caps for different tanks for you know for various different vehicles. So you screw that on there. So this is the gauge that's going to vacuum test it and also fill it at the same time uh, and I'll show you how it's done. So how this works is air comes in from a compressor and as it blows through here it creates a vacuum through the system so this gauge here tells you the vacuum that's inside of it and obviously if this holds a the vacuum then there's no leaks 
and then you can use the same kit to fill it, which we'll show you in a second. So you turn the valve on, and as you can see, it's starting to build a vacuum. So now that's holding a vacuum and if you look at all the hoses as well it's difficult to see but the actual hoses compress in so all the airlines you can see so look there you go look that one down there is all sucked in completely flat so that's obviously created a vacuum in the system so essentially sucked all the air out which is now ready for cooling leave it 10 minutes so what we're going to do now is leave this 10 minutes and if this drops then there's a leak somewhere and we're going to have to go around looking for it. If it holds this pressure, then we know everything's okay. Right, so we've left this for uh, roughly about 10 minutes. The gauge is exactly where it was, so that means there's no leaks in it. It's holding the vacuum, so now we're going to fill it. So the idea of this is supposed to fill it and eliminate the need of bleeding, but it may still need some sort of bleeding. It's not always 100% perfect sort of way of doing it but essentially you put that inside your bottle of coolant as low as it can go the gauge is high up like that and if you're as you can see if you open that up the valve up it starts to draw the coolant into the system and fill it up as the vacuum's draining out so and then so that's filling the system We're going to let the engine warm up, just keep your eye on the temperature gauge, make sure the fan kicks in and then we'll bleed it. There only seems to be one bleed valve which is on the radiator so we'll just make sure all the air is out of it as well. So just about to fit the headlights, uh, we bought a repair kit, funnily enough, from eBay. Um, and you, you Dremel off the original tabs and you screw these new tabs to it. And they actually look really good, like, to be honest, OEM. The way they fit, so we're just about to pop that in. To the top, look. Good boy. No, up towards you, there you go. So this saves quite a lot of money these because these headlights are about £400 for a pair. A lot of people recommend salvaging the tabs using JB Weld if you can, like gluing them back on, but obviously looks a bit cheap.
So we've finished the front end of it now, so it's all complete. Um, so the only couple of jobs left to do is the interior, because the interior is an absolute state. It's filthy. I don't know what, what happened to it to end up like this bad, but it's absolutely covered in mud. The seats are stained. It needs a really good valet on the inside. The boots are also a mess, but this had a lot of parts in it as well, but it's also a little, for some odd reason, a bit of mold. So we're gonna try and clean it all out and get it looking fresh. We should do this one. So we decided to take the seats out because it is absolutely grim. And the only way of giving this a really good clean would be to remove the seats. It's just in such a state. I mean, look at the back of the seats, look at that. Bit of a state in it. So we're literally going to gut the whole car, take everything that's removable out, obviously within reason. There's loads of stuff in here. There's a drink. There we go. Oh. No, like Bottle of Lucas Aid. Hey, that, that's easy worth a quid. If we take that off the price of the car, that makes it only. What's that for? I know it as well. But. but... To a central eating system. I've always wanted one of them. Maybe it was a plumber. There's more. Oh, what's this? Something from B&Q. That's in the receipt. Shops at B&M. What did he buy? What's this that in it? Sours. Oh, some alcoholic beverage. Sours. Whereabouts is this from then? Does it, don't think it tells you, does it? Oh. It's a BT. I just searched the price code up. Fucking padlock. What the fuck? Chain your light on. Yeah, but you've got you've got to think about it. Shop to be another lot. Animal balls, Panasonic batteries, some mayo. Mayo. Loves his B and M. This person. Tell you what though, all this can be taken off the price of the car though, meaning it's even more of a bargain. Oh yeah, definitely more of a bargain. Could have used our screwdriver to rebuild this car. I think he's taking this out, you never know what you're going to uncover. Let's find out. There's a, a shoe for a kid. Oh, it's 2p, take that off the price. It's welded. Why? What are they putting that? Oh, is that like dog oh, poo bags or something? Yeah, that, isn't it? Oh. It's a shoe, that. Hey. Yeah. Oh, it's nasty, isn't it? Oh. Grim. Ready? Yeah. Even though you can see it's just cheap and normal cleaner. It's gone everywhere.
brand new, don't I? Yeah, it's got a little gun on it. So I've just got a uh, warning light on the dashboard. Uh, so obviously the car's pretty much finished now. The interior's been cleaned. The exterior's just gonna be washed today. Uh, but we're gonna have a look to see what the code is. Um, so it's just reading the ECU. So it says, turbocharger wastegate valve. So what that is, that's because we had, um, well, it was unplugged, the plug was damaged. So obviously as that's been unplugged, it's created a code. So we're just gonna try clearing it. So clearing complete. Then they check on the dash. You have to start it, won't you? Disconnect it. 